I'm in and I play with drones. And if you have got a new drone for the first time or forgotten how to use it, then you might be wondering how to get it set up and get the most out of it. They are fragile things. You're only going to crash them once before you need to send them off for repair. So whether or not it's the DJI Neo 2, the Mini 5 Pro, one of the bigger drones like the Air 3S. Today I'm outlining how to get it all set up quickly and get up in the air. In the last few months, DJI have pumped out a few top-end models, from the mighty Mavic 4 Pro to the Air 3S as well, the Mini 5 Pro, and also the more recent Neo 2. Now, I'm focusing on DJI drones because DJI are the biggest and most popular drone manufacturer by far, and what I explain today will probably cover most of the new models that people may have received over Christmas. And whether or not you got the small Neo 2 or a larger model, the process is pretty much the same. So I'm going to try and keep things as quick as I can. Before that though, do me a favour, as ever, tap the little thumb up button for me to help the video along. If you find it useful, then others probably will as well. And tapping that little thumb tells YouTube that you found it useful and will recommend it to more people. But look, first off, if it's your first DJI drone, first thing you're going to have to do is head over to DJI.com and set up an account. It's free and easy and you'll enter those same details into the remote control of the drone to unlock all the features. Otherwise, you'll find the drone is restricted to around 30 meters height and distance. Put the battery into the drone and plug it into a USB-C charger. Bigger drones like the Air 3S may need a more powerful charger like a laptop charger rather than a basic phone charger. But whilst it's charging, you can get yourself registered as most countries have this requirement. Just do a search on drone registration for the country you're in. The UK site is straightforward enough and from the 1st of January 2026, you will need both an operator ID, which covers the legal owner of the drone, and also a flyer ID, which is the person actually flying. You need both for pretty much all model drones with a camera. And in most cases, you will be both the owner and the flyer, so you'll need both. The operator ID costs around £12 and lasts a year, needs to be printed off and stuck to the side of the drone or inside the battery compartment. The flyer ID is free and lasts for five years, but you need to pass a basic multiple choice test, which helps teach you the basic rules about how and where you can fly. Now these rules are changing significantly on the 1st of January 2026 in the UK, and I will be posting a separate video outlining that shortly. But for now, let's carry on with getting up in the air. Once the green charging lights are solid, it's fully charged and you can set them up. Best to do this at home though, where you've got good internet, as it will always prompt you to do a firmware update and needs the internet to register your account. Switch on the drone with a short then long double press of the power button. Same for the remote. If you have a remote which connects to your phone, you're gonna to have to download the DJI Fly app first, which you may have to download directly from dji.com slash downloads. If the remote has got a built-in screen, then you're either gonna get guided to enter the Wi-Fi details as you first power it up, or you can manually enter them by dragging down from the top of the screen, then tapping the little settings button top right, then go into network details and enter your Wi-Fi details there. Either way, you need internet access in order to set it up. And once you've entered your username and password, it should find the drone and show you the camera view. If it doesn't, then you can tap the blue connection guide text and follow the prompts to put the remote and the drone into pairing mode by long pressing the power button on each one. Usually though, the remote and the drone will be paired up perfectly fine out of the box. Next, it will probably prompt you to update the firmware. Again, you need decent internet for this, and DJI do update their firmware quite often, especially on some of the newer models that are often released with some functions still missing in the first week or two. Updating by remote control usually works fine, but if it fails repeatedly, then connect the drone or the remote to your laptop or computer and download DJI Assist 2, the consumer drone edition, from dji.com slash downloads again, and use that program to update things that way. Once that's done, you're ready to get to grips with the control and the DJI fly up display. Now, I could easily spend an hour talking on all the settings, so for now I'm gonna go through the main settings on screen. Along the top, you have any messages about your readiness for takeoff. Now, your drone uses GPS to know where it is in relation to you and the takeoff point. So if it loses the signal for any reason, it will know where to automatically fly back to. So wait until you get that green ready for takeoff message. Further along the top, you have the remaining flight time, which only works in flight and gives you more info if you tap it to expand it. You also have the signal strength indicators for the remote control and the number of satellites that you're locked onto. 
The three dots on the top right open up all the main settings for the drone itself, including the flight and camera settings. Again, way too many to go into now, so I'm gonna to link to another video showing you how to get smoother flight controls to get better videos. Then on the right hand side, you've got the photo and video options where you can choose between still photo, video, and a few other different camera options depending on what model drone you've got. Bottom right, you have the camera options, which default to auto mode, but can easily be set to manual pro mode if you tap the little pro icon in the corner. We will then be able to adjust the individual parameters depending on whether you're in video or still photo mode. You can choose to keep some of the parameters set to automatic while setting others manually. Then running along the bottom, you have got the height and distance and speed indicators, showing how fast you're ascending or descending, along with how far you are and how high you are above from the takeoff point. Most countries in the world have got a hard limit of 120 meters or 400 feet above ground level to keep your drone clear from manned aircraft. Again, the rules in the UK are changing on the 1st of January 2026, but for now, just know that it is illegal to fly above 120 meters and illegal to fly within five kilometers of an airport or over crowds. The Fly app will show you a map of flight restriction zones, but this is not maintained by DJI and relies on periodic updates from the CAA. So you'll probably be better off navigating to Drone Scene, run by the UK's largest drone club, the Grey Arrows, for truckloads of useful information on where to fly and where not to fly in the UK. Again, I will do a link to that below. You can swap the displays of the lower left corner of the screen to change it to the radar view that shows your drone versus the takeoff point, which I personally find a bit more useful. And then finally on the left, you've got the takeoff button. Be outside when you press this, unless you have got a small model like the Neo 2 or the Flip with built-in prop guards. Flying indoors will have poor GPS, allowing the drone to drift into walls where the props will stop abruptly when it hits the wall and the drone will fall to the ground and easily break the camera gimbal. So if you're ready to fly, get outdoors, away from trees and obstacles, and get to grips with the basics. Don't have any dogs nearby, they will go nuts and try and grab the drone, it could easily hurt their eyes or snout. Same goes for kids. You can either long press the takeoff button and release it, or just move the two sticks on the remote to the five o'clock and seven o'clock positions to start the props. The default settings means that the left stick is gonna move the drone up and down, lift it up and change the altitude, as well as rotating it whilst the right stick will move the drone forwards or backwards and sideways. Light touches are key, and again, I've got other videos on how to smooth things out. But for your first few flights, keep the drone fairly low and close, and just get used to flying. Use small taps on the sticks whilst you're getting used to things, so any movement that you do wrong will actually only result in a small movement, and you won't go too far wrong. Remember, you can always just let go of the sticks, and it will bring the drone to a quick halt, and it will just hover, waiting for your next command. But one of the best practice things you can do on your first flight is to try and fly in a figure eight, as that will force you to learn how the sticks interact and control the drone's movement. So it's not easy, make sure you're not near any trees, but flying in a figure of eight will be a very good practice indeed. If you want to take photos and videos, you can select on screen and swap between video and photo modes. The screen view is so clear, it's very easy to get sucked into just using that and forget to look up at the drone itself. But again, most countries, uh, the UK included, have got hard rules that require you to keep the drone in clear sight. So you can take action if anything else is flying into the area. Now, if you are flying FPV uh, with a mask over your face, it's first person view, then you, the rules state you do need a spotter alongside you when flying as you can't see the outside world. But if you're just flying a normal camera drone without goggles, a spot alongside you is helpful, but it is not a legal requirement. Despite the slightly confusing guidance on the CAA's uh, drone code, some people are wrongly thinking it does mean that you can't take your eyes off the drone to change camera settings. It's not the case, but just keep the drone in sight. And finally, when you want to come home, you can either just long press the same button you use to take off, because when you're in flight, it changes to a return to home button or you can just fly the drone back manually and land. Now if it's a small drone, then you can just hold that hand flat and still and keep the left stick down to lower the drone onto your hand. Or if you've just got flat ground, you can just land the drone on the ground, but again, make sure dogs and kids can't get to it because they will hurt themselves.
But if things go wrong when you're up in the air, then usually things will often look after themselves nicely with DJI drones. A low battery is going to automatically kick in a return to home sequence that will automatically fly the drone back to the takeoff point before the battery runs out. Equally, if you lose signal, which can happen if you fly behind a hill or an obstacle, then the drone will retrace its flight route for a short time trying to re-establish connection. Failing that, it will then work out the best way to fly back to you, which may be retracing some of the flight route or may come back in a straight line. But either way, it should come back to you automatically. Lastly though, some key points I think to help any drama that I've found from my experience. First of all, stay away from people. Non-drone flying people seem to have a real hatred of drones. They're easily pissed off. So stay high and don't fly over gardens or houses. Also, good, a uh, good idea is to not fly in very strong wind. Even in a breeze, the wind is way stronger up high than it is on the ground. And if your drone is starting to drift away, unable to get back, just land it remotely and walk over to retrieve it. It's far better doing that than letting it blown away. Generally, fly out into the wind and fly back with the wind. And finally, my best advice would be don't push the battery because a low battery warning is when things can go wrong. So take off with a fully charged battery and don't ignore the low battery warnings. Remember, when you panic, things go wrong. So go slow, keep your head, and hopefully you'll get your videos and photos and have great fun. But look, that is about it. I really tried to keep this short because it could have gone on for hours. But as always, drop any comments below if you have got any other useful tips or if you've run into problems yourself. Keep an eye out for my new updated uh, drone rules video that's coming out in the next few days because of the big changes coming out in uh, January, January the 1st, 2026. But for now, look, as I said, hope you found this useful. Until next time, have fun. Happy flying.